presence is ample proof of the importance of collaboration and the cooperation required to deal with the pertinent issues of the maritime sector, especially in the Gulf of Guinea. I foresee a successful program, considering the extensive patronage and attendance by both our Navy and those from Friends of Ghana, stakeholders and exhibitors. I've been informed that transformative discussions originating from the previous conferences have contributed to the relative calm we're currently enjoying and experiencing in the Gulf of Guinea. Long may that continue. Ladies and gentlemen, the recent global economic downturn has necessitated the need for developing countries to engineer alternative and innovative solutions to propel their economies. Some small island developing states have been proactive in harnessing the potential of the 24 trillion United States dollar estimated ocean wealth to mitigate their social, economic, and environmental vulnerabilities. It is for this reason that I admonished Gulf of Guinea states at the third extraordinary Co Gulf of Guinea Commission's conference here in Accra last April to continue addressing maritime security issues to build a safe, secure, and prosperous Gulf of Guinea for sustainable development. This exhibition and conference is an important platform for maritime stakeholders, particularly naval chiefs, to discuss and strategize towards an effective way to create a more conducive condition to leverage effectively the blue economy for sustainable economic development using appropriate technologies. I consider the theme for this 2023 conference, consolidating the gains made in the Gulf of Guinea, the role of stakeholders and technology in sustaining a safe and secure maritime domain as very appropriate and fitting, considering the geostrategic importance of the Gulf of Guinea to global trade. The region is vital for African oil and other exports and imported goods with an estimated regional gross domestic product of some 550 billion United States dollars annually. Equally important is the sea's contribution to communication and technology, as it holds strategic underwater intercontinental communication fiber cables. Naval chiefs, participants, and maritime stakeholders must thus fight innovative solutions to strengthen further the gains made in creating a conducive environment for business to thrive. While past efforts have brought relative calm to the waters in our region, some entities continue to paint a gloomy picture of events in the Gulf of Guinea. The fact remains that with the concerted efforts of the Ghana Navy and other key maritime stakeholders, Ghana has not recorded any piracy or armed robbery incidents at sea since 2022. The fact that some ship owners reported a few unverified petty theft incidents at anchorages could not be equated to piracy in the context of international maritime law definition. As much as maritime rating stakeholder organizations contribute towards international shipping, they should be mindful of the implications of inaccurate reportage on a nation's ability to participate in global trade. I commend the ex excellent collaborative efforts between the navies in the region, our international partners and stakeholders, for the considerable reduction in maritime crimes, especially piracy. I believe the maritime security agencies attending this program will engage the same spirit of collaboration in the conference deliberations to tackle the high cases of psycho and illegal, unregulated, and unreported fishing 
in this region. It is important to indicate that IUU fishing, for instance, is linked to piracy, human trafficking, and illicit drug and weapon smuggling. I thus urge the maritime law enforcers to consider using technology to break the vital link between these crimes and criminal syndicates. Ladies and gentlemen, technology has become a vital tool in our quest to sustain a safe and secure maritime domain. The critical challenge is that perpetrators of maritime crimes use sophisticated forms of technology which require a more innovative counter-advanced technology that gives enforcers a comparative advantage. Maritime security stakeholders must take charge of this domain in order to deny access to terrorist groups drifting southwards from the Sahel region towards the Gulf of Guinea. I must stress the need for multifaceted technological approach to deny unauthorized use of the underwater surface and above water resources by criminals and economic saboteurs. Government recognizes the need for well-resourced and technologically advanced Navy. We've thus commenced the equipping of the Navy with drones, coastal radars, and real-time surveillance and tracking protocols in order to improve maritime domain awareness. In addition, the government is committed to acquiring some offshore patrol vessels, fast patrol boats, and crafts for the Ghana Navy to augment existing platforms in order to improve physical presence at sea. Indeed, on 9th September, our formally commissioned in second D, four patrol boats and one landing craft for use by the Navy. The construction of naval infrastructure projects is on course. For instance, the ongoing construction of the forward operating base at Ezinlibo is more than 60% complete government will continue with its naval infrastructure construction policy to improve the Navy's maritime response time. Government will continue supporting the Maritime Authority, the Ports and Harbors Authority, the fisheries sector, the various institutions in the oil and gas sector, and the entire maritime industry with policies, equipment, training, and resources as part of maritime security capacity building. All these investments are aimed at developing the blue economy. And to that end, no single country, ministry, or agency can go it alone. The maritime commons are interconnected in diverse ways, hence the need for international, regional, and national collaboration towards achieving our collective aspirations. I've seen a discussion on a decade of the implementation of the Yaoundé architecture for maritime security, as well as the combined maritime task force of the Gulf of Guinea in the agenda for this conference. And I look forward to the outcome of these deliberations. It is important to note that all these strategies are hinged on a functional and effective maritime governance system that is able to detect illegal activity at sea and has the right structures onshore to ensure law enforcement. I'm happy to note that Ghana is taking steps to strengthen maritime governance and also harmonize activities in the maritime sector with the adoption of Ghana's National Integrated Maritime Strategy. It is expected that the successful operationalization of the strategy and its detailed implementation plan will bolster cooperation among all relevant stakeholders, notably the various ministries, departments, and agencies, actors within Ghana's security architecture, civil society organizations, and international partners to achieve the vision of a safe and secure maritime domain with thriving blue economy sectors that would enhance the livelihoods of Ghanaians and boost our GDP growth. 
I urge all stakeholders to participate fully in the realization of the vision and objectives of the National Integrated Maritime Strategy to ensure that the interests of present and future generations is protected. I'd like to acknowledge the strong efforts of the Ministers for Defense, Transport and National Security for their commitment towards the creation of this document. I also want to express my thanks to the Ghana Maritime Authority and the Ghana Navy for carrying this document on their shoulders. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, I believe firmly that this exhibition and conference will offer the platform for closer network and strategic discussions to ensure that a safe and secure environment for Ghana's blue economy, that of the Gulf of Guinea, to thrive. I entreat you as maritime professionals to apply technology to find lasting solutions to maritime security challenges as we roll out Ghana's national integrated maritime strategy and audit a decade of the implementation of the Yaoundé architecture for maritime security. Accordingly, ladies and gentlemen, I have the singular honor and privilege to declare the International Maritime Defense Exhibition and Conference 2023 officially open. and Ghana's National Integrated Maritime Strategy duly launched. May God bless us all. I thank you for your attention.